check that out. Burning bush. Anyway, the only thing that looks better than that is this tractor. Um, I was working on this uh, 1055 Husky Bolens with a uh, 10 horsepower Tecumseh and I'm having problems with the starter. I tried rebuilding it before with, uh, you can see the new terminal there, put a new uh, brush set in there and cleaned up the um, rotor, whatever, commutator and uh, I thought I was good. Uh, but it still doesn't turn over fast enough and also I put a smaller pulley here thinking maybe that could get it to turn over But let me put you on a stand here, and I'll show you what it's doing Okay, so basically what's happening is the starter goes to turn and then as soon as it hits compression it kind of bounces back um, Also, I noticed the belt is slipping a little because this is actually not the right uh, width pulley for this belt and this belt is terribly worn thin um, you can see it's riding a, a good belt to be all the way up to the top of that pulley and we're you know a three eighths of an inch from that so um, I'll just turn it over and let you watch it so this one continues to slip a little bit but you can see that kind of rocks back and forth so I'm going to rebuild the starter with some parts uh, just renew renew the internals there and see if that's going to give me enough uh, muscle and I'll put the old pulley back on the one that was designed for it nothing could be easier than changing one of these old things um, there's really not much to them um, you have a main battery cable and the field is marked F field is a smaller um, wire gauge you want to have your battery disconnected while you're playing with this luckily mine is completely dead except for the jump pack so which probably doesn't help starting it either I think it's kind of interesting. Somebody scratched F into here, but that one's factory stamped F, so they, had, they obviously didn't know which one they were even hooking it to at one point here. This one goes through the bracket into the starter face itself. Put it all the way up, slip the belt off, and then we just got two bolts on the bottom. Get you down there so you can see. Actually, I'll bring you up here just as good. That way I don't have to keep holding that thing. There we go. Let's bring it over to a workstation. All right, we got it so we can work on it. Um, if anybody's wondering, this is a Delco Remy 1101875 serial 1030. It's a 12 volt. I'm going to start by taking the pull you off because I know I'm going to change that back 15 16 socket it's 
best to use an impact on that because otherwise you're going to have a hard time holding it in order to uh, make it turn. You may or may not have shims depending on where it has to go on the tractor. This one has a flywheel key in there. Let me turn this into the sun. Maybe you can see that better. Flywheel key needs to be removed. I like to just grab them with the pair of side cutters. Pull them up a little bit if they don't want to come out by themselves. Then to take the main housing open, we'll see what socket this is. Seven sixteenths. Seven sixteenths socket. Just lost, almost lost that one just now. And that's 3 8 drive. How about that? A little water in there. Probably doesn't help any. And those bolt all the way to the outside plate on the other side, so they're going to be pretty long. Forgot one of the uh, bushings was still on there, I guess. This is not letting go for some reason. Yeah, I got water in mine. That's probably part of the reason why it was working at first and now is no longer working. Do you come out the top way, or do you come out the bottom way? It's going to have a bearing attached to it. And the brushes, so it's actually going to have to go out the other way. wonder why I'm being a little ginger it's because this tang has already been that ear has already been welded if I come up the brushes are in the way so that's gonna have to come out of the bearing this way there's a cap here right As I try to pull this out, I think it's grabbing on the uh, carbon brushes, so the shaft has to come that way.
Not good. Bring you back when I figure it out. Okay, so it looks like there's multiple plans of attack on this one. I basically need to get that shaft to come through that bearing. I don't think the bearing comes out the back way. As a matter of fact, I know it doesn't because I just looked. So I'm going to try hitting here. If that doesn't work, I'll put a gear puller on it. Push on the middle, grab here, and uh, try it that way. And in my case, the bearing popped out, and it does, does come out the inside. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, see, there's water in here. I don't know if y'all can see that on the camera, but that's not good. I took this and sanded it before and cleaned this up, and this had a lot of wear. These are worn way down from where they used to be, so I'm going to replace all of this. I don't know what the real bad component is, if it's the coil or if it's that, I'm changing them both. So one curiosity that came in the uh, rebuild kit was a new end plate, which I find is interesting because it wouldn't seem to be a part you'd need to replace generally, um, but maybe they get enough of them that are broken that they just figure you're going to snap that thing when you're taking it out, I don't know. Why would you need that? But anyway, glad to have it. Um, the only thing I have to do is try to get this old oil cap out. Unfortunately, mine, the lid is, uh, the spring is gone, which is kind of bad. Um, but otherwise it just has a giant hole, which is going to let water right into your bearing, so you don't want that. So I'll have to figure out how to try to get this one out later. So the kit I got come, comes with all new, all new everything, so... I'm just going to take these old brushes out even though I barely used them. Ooh, don't lose that little screw. You'll never find one like that. Quiet bird, I'm videotaping. Well, what size is it? Not that one either. How about that one? Yeah, win. That's for one coil. Actually, I'm going to replace the coils one at a time. Um, the kit I got comes with uh, both field and uh, starter coil, or whatever the other one's called. Comes with both. So this one comes with the uh, pre-assembled terminal, which is good. And this is obviously the field one with the smaller wires. And uh, wherever that one goes, I need to attach that to something. This one's pre-terminated with the terminal on it. This uh, starting one is pre-terminated on both ends, so obviously this is the field. The one I'm working on right now. Just trying to find where all the wires go. Alright, so that wire goes to the far post and to here. Okay. They got these huge standard screwdriver. Um, I actually found these at uh, Harbor Freight. 
and uh, this one fits perfectly absolutely ideal I don't think there'd be any other way besides using an impact to get that out because it's been in there for an awfully long time I mean you might get it out but I don't think the chances would be good without this huge bit spins them right out sweet that one I didn't have out during the initial attempt at the rebuild there we go yeah I can see some water on here still not good it's all grease soaked it's probably not the best conditions for it okay and then this metal plate needs to be reused and I don't know I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it exactly facing the same way because it probably matters with uh, the coil or the electricity or whatever yeah, that thing fits pretty good for aftermarket What do I do with that big screw? Did one of you take it? Oh, there it is. Screw bolt. And I just trapped the wire underneath it. I got the one free. But the other one, yep. Take it out just a little bit. See if I can sneak that wire out of there. Bring that up. There we go. I'm going to re secure that while I'm thinking about it, otherwise, you never know. Now, the kit also comes with, like I said, the brushes, new cap for the outside, new terminal for that one, and hey, new screws, who knew? I'll put them in just because they're Phillips now. Probably makes more sense in today's modern society. Um, oh, hey. Nice touch. A new key. In case you booger up your other one coming out. And two bearings. And new springs for the brush holders that keep the brushes pushed up against. So it's a pretty complete kit, and it came with the new, uh, whatever you call the thing that spins. Came with that too. All right, I want to put this first one in here and drop the hardware.
Boy, they really leave that wire short. You could barely make that. I guess as long as it stays out of the way of the piece going around, you're all right. And this one, why they didn't put a terminal on there already, you really could. Probably one of those things that fits 50,000 different ones and that's just a universal kit. Actually, that terminal, it's a little bigger than I wanted. Looks like that'll make it. Good. Alright, now let's go for the other coil. This post, I just put a new one in there, but the new one came pre-terminated with this thing on it, which is even better, because I had to solder this old one back in there. that one through and the other wire goes here okay got that one out again some more water that was hiding inside the starter not good. All right, this one's already pre-attached on there, which is nice. Get my piece of metal out. That one came right out. This time I won't pinch my wire. Or if I do, I'll just edit the video real good. Or is that Phillips bit I pulled out? I don't know why I didn't take this off earlier before I put it in there. And that 
does not fit. This insulator has got an oblong oval and I don't think my hole does. I think it's just a circle hole. Actually I think I had that problem back when I rebuilt it the first time so I'm going to look back on this one. Yes. I had filed off the flats I remember now. This one's had the turned into a round hole so I'll use the one that I had on there before. It's new. Just didn't work out. Good. All right. Now, these springs that hold the brushes, I've got new ones. I'm not going to replace them. I have a feeling it's going to be a real pain in the neck to change them, and I don't see that we're going to make any huge improvements on performance there. Those springs seem to be in okay shape, except for this one's got a little water from rust from water there, but it is what it is. Okay, now the brushes. I think these are the same both sides. Yeah. And I didn't watch which way they come out. If it was this up or this down. I think it's probably that down. Let's see what reaches the best. Probably up. Try to get all these wires in there. Teeny tiny little screw. Yeah, that wire clear. Okay. I wasn't sure of that five seconds ago.
It's like wrangling snakes. Try again. Wish there was a really great procedure I can tell you about, but uh, it's called trial and error. At least that's my approach. I think we won. Beautiful. Okay, so on this end plate, there's this oil cap, and I found if I just twist it and pull it, it's a push in type cap. So I'll transfer that one over to the new the new piece and I assume I'll have to tap it down in there and it doesn't fit I'll just glue the freaking thing in there can't figure why you'd need to oil a greased bearing anyway okay fail number one and there's two there's a no, there's a little hole here that helps you index where where this goes top and bottom and the old one had a pin driven through it so I gotta drive that pin out and put it in the new one okay instead of driving that old pin out I'm just gonna drive a roll pin into this new one the other one was a solid pin shouldn't really matter Let's see if we have anything near the right size here maybe this one if I can get it out yeah I think that's the one okay and then the last thing I gotta do there's uh, inside here is a little square rubber o-ring I assume that's to help keep the water out and the oil in the oil cap area we'll just swap that over And I've snapped it. And guess what they don't give you in the kit? Interesting. And it looks like it doesn't really fit in that groove like the other groove was wider than that. How interesting.
Yeah, it really doesn't go. It's like too long. And I know the diameter is the same because the bearing is the same. Isn't that interesting? That groove is cut differently. I'm going to have to get just a universal type O-ring and fit that in there. This one's not going to work. Alright, let's search for some O-rings. Maybe first try. No, that, that thing's never going to fit in there. Too small a diameter. That's pretty close. Number 28, R28. But the question is, will the bearing slide by it? I think that's perfect, actually. Just got to be a little proud. I guess what you're doing is you're trapping between the inside of the starter and the oil fill for the bearing. This is going to have a cover over it. So I guess you could fill it with oil and run that bearing in full oil. Which is weird because they give you the shielded bearings. So I don't know why you'd need oil, but whatever. It is, that's the way it comes. Okay, I think I've got the end plate all ready now. Uh, let's look at these armatures, I believe they call these. So everything looks good, but I see that this sleeve is pressed onto that shaft. I'm going to need to transfer that over. Um, the other side looks looks good. The bearing's still on the other one, but I'm going to put the new bearing as I install this one. No problems. So let's see if that collar wants to come off easily or the hard way. She's moving. There we go. Good. Slides right on. Looks like they might have knurled this shaft a little bit. I could see some crosshatch patterns just to hold that probably just for assembly because where is it going to go? I mean it's not going to fly off of there. Okay, so I just lost some footage. so. Uh, to replace the bearing on the end plate, take out the three screws. I took a uh, hammer on the inside race, just hammer the old one out, hammer the new one in, hitting only the outside of it, whether you use a socket or however you get that in there. Mine wasn't that tight, so I just, I just tapped right directly on it. And pretty much just put it back together. All right, I think it's time for some reassembly here. Let's see if we can remember the order it goes in. All right, so this goes in that way. Put the brushes in their holders. Get them out of your way. Oh, come on. All right, slide this in. There we go. We're off to a good start there. Now, this is the side that just gets the bearing, okay. 
get those wires, make sure they're not going to get into trouble. And how is this one keyed? Oh, it all keys on this, this one with the key. Okay, never mind. I honestly don't know if the bearing has to go on first or go in here first. I'm almost thinking it's got to go in here first. I'm going to put a little bit of fluid film in here. That should help the bearing right into that O-ring. And I'm going to start it into this housing first. We're at the O-ring. I'm actually going to get a socket that goes on this and hit it. Okay, I just put the bearing just past flush there. I don't know how far it really has to go in. Uh, but let's see how this lines up. Here's a hole. Wait a minute, I was going to put that on the wrong way. This part goes on this side of the thing. There's an index hole there, and there's a hole there. I was thinking about it backwards. Right. Now here's where the uh, bearing depth comes into play. Our pin and that notch line up. Yeah, it's got to go down well farther than what I had. And that seems to be home. We are not hitting anything. What is going on there? Those bolts are all the way in and they are not reaching. Is this end plate thicker? I don't think so. It should reach. Okay, so those bolts, due to how long they are, if they're even a little crooked, they'll fall in a hole next to where they're actually supposed to be threaded into. And that hole, of course, isn't threaded. Alright, give it a little spin. Looking good. Now, for the cap, the old cap was very much shallower. This one could hit that if it went in too far. It's possible you could put it in this way. I mean, it's supposed to be watertight, it's supposed to hold oil in that bearing.
I just don't know how much more I have to go down to hit that. I guess I'll try it, and if I have to take it out and booger it up, I'll do that on this one. Yeah, I think I'm already hitting. Yeah, for sure. So, do we want that sticking out? Do we care if that sticks out? But we do care if it hits the end of the shaft, because that thing's going to be red hot and wearing out real quick. So I think we'll put in the shallow one that it came with. The OEM one, I should say. Oh, now I've done it. So, so the cap that it came with is very much too tall. I'm already hitting the end of the shaft there, and we're not all the way in yet. Don't like the way that looks. Let's see if we can get this one back out. So I had to mutilate the other one to get it off. I'm going with the original thin disc which will give me enough room for that shaft to spin without something hitting it. I'm just going to set it with the socket here. Just make it about flush or a little more. And we're good. Okay, back here on the pulley side. I'm going to call it the pulley side. Uh, we had this bushing we took out earlier. That way, whenever you bolt something down, that rolls with the with the shaft and the bearing, not scraping on the housing. Um, I've got a new pulley. No, this is not the right pulley. The pulley I'm putting on for mine is 201-12004. This is an offshore replica of a real pulley. Um, this one comes with two different size keys. They just decided to make them fit like a whole bunch of machines, I guess. Put my key back in. Actually, that key fits just a little loose. I'm going to use the one that came in the kit. Alright, so... In typical... China fashion, they, the key that they give you is too small, also the original key is too small. Truth is on something like this it really doesn't matter because this is belt driven, it's not going to really be getting a shock, so I think we'll be okay, but uh, pretty poor, pretty poor. I don't know which way this is supposed to face out on this, but uh, I'll just go that way. And then I'll have to work with the shims to see what's going to really um, work as far as being lined up once I get it on the machine. So I will not tighten this all the way because I'll be taking it back off. All right, got you all lined up here. Let's see what the starter will do. Perfect. Pulls, turns it over with plenty of speed. That's what we needed. I hereby declare this starter Wildwood certified. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.